motivational speakers ask um. These guys charge schools thousands of dollars, in some cases, tens of thousands. They make up lies and stories, and play on the emotions of kids. Some of them are great, but most are fraudsters. Being too full, stretching your stomach, is much more uncomfortable than being hungry. I can't relate to how people live like that. When my stomach is empty, and in relative pain, I still have complete mobility and flexibility. When I've eaten too much walking briskly is gross. Touching my toes. Still doable but will take more time. I don't like confrontation is usually a code phrase for I only want to talk behind people's backs. Have you guys ever heard a story from someone where they are obviously the victim? The bad guy in the story is obviously and easily provably wrong. Then when you ask why, didn't you tell them? The reply is I don't like confrontation. They are right. They don't like confrontation. Talking behind their opponent's back lets them feel like they're right without having to prove it or defend their statements. Confronting the person gives that person an opportunity to defend themselves. Which is exactly what non-confrontational people don't want. If I'm telling all my friends and coworkers that you're a lazy piece of crap and I do everything, I get to live that fantasy for as long as I want, unless you catch wind of it. Then I have to defend my statements, and, big surprise, the reality of what's going on doesn't make the non-confrontational person look good. Be very suspicious of people who have stories about how they are clearly the victim, but they don't do anything, because they don't like confrontation. Having to own a car, to function in today's world sucks. I don't like driving at all. When I was young I was never interested in owning and maintaining a car. I went through the motions of driver's ed and had no issues getting my license. I've never had any particularly bad experiences with cars as the driver or the passenger. I simply don't like them or how necessary they've become. One day I want to live somewhere with literally any other option. Where I live now sidewalks are few and far between. Bike lanes are non-existent, and public transportation doesn't exist. Pool smell is one of the best smells. Going to the pool and smelling the area is such a satisfying feeling. Yeah I looked it up it's bad to inhale and stuff, but the hell with that am I smelling holiness. The smell of an extinguished candle is better than scented candle itself. Short. Simple. I like scented candles and all kinds of smells, but I absolutely love the scent of a recently extinguished candle. When you blow it out, and it carries that fleeting scent of warmth, and doesn't quite smell like harsh smoke or anything like that. Yeah. Love that John right there. I wish they made an extinguished candle scented candle. Eating a tomato like an apple is not only okay but is wonderful. When did this become such a bad thing? I flipping love ee tomatoes especially straight up raw like an apple, but I always get jokes about it being weird from people. It's a fruit which means I can eat it like an apple, and even if it wasn't I still would eat it like an apple. Age is no excuse for being set in the wrong ways. I was fixing something today and was doing more work than I needed to. A younger gentleman corrected me. It did hurt my pride a little bit, but then I realized, just because I'm older doesn't mean that I have the right idea. Age does not automatically grant me immunity from criticism. I think a lot of older gentlemen that trash the younger generations need to eat the humble pie from time to time. Designer clothing is ugly and a waste of money. Title pretty much says it all. I hate seeing people walking around with a guxy bag or belt and calling it style. Most of the time you can find clothing at thrift stores that look the exact same for an even cheaper price. Too many people waste their money on thousand dollar bags and most of the time it's just to show off that they have money. Personally I don't think it looks good at all, and there's so many more alternatives. Edit, I'm not bashing on you if you like, or even wear designer brands, I'm just stating my opinion. You can wear whatever you want. Commercials need to say what song they used, and by what artist. Not only should the artist get credit, but there are so many times where I'll be on my phone and really like the song of a commercial, but can't shazam it because I'm already on my phone. Socks go on before pants. 
putting on your socks before putting on your pants is clearly the better order. I know it looks silly to wear socks without pants for a little while, but putting on socks is often the most agile thing I do in a day and I won't be encumbered by stiff pants. I've been in enough locker rooms to know this is an unpopular opinion. Edit, I should clarify by pants I did not mean underwear. I may be unconventional, but I'm not insane. Thin pancakes are better than thick pancakes. That's it really. I like them to be like a quarter inch thick and the size of my plate. Thicker ones are always dry and kind of heavy, and I always liked the idea of eating three pancakes on top of each other like the cartoons, and to me, it's better when they are light and thin. You are going to die, and it's probably not going to be in a pleasant way. I work in healthcare. I've seen people die as many people in healthcare have. I've also known people who die in their homes. But, most of the time, people die in under really terrible circumstances. People in heart failure and those with COPD slowly but surely lose their capacity to care for themselves. Fluid backs up and causes terrible edema, skin issues, and breathing issues. Their hearts pump less and less efficiently, so much so that they become incapable of living on their own. They descend into death slowly. Some get dementia and suffer the extremely terrible decline of memory and ability for self-care. Ironically, a lot of these ones are healthy other than their dementia and waste away slowly over many years. Very few people I know die in their sleep with very little suffering. They are a rarity. I recall one patient vomiting fesses in their living room, only to be rushed to the air where they discovered that the patient was so extremely constipated that they had to operate and the patient didn't survive. Why is this an unpopular opinion you may be thinking? Well I think it's unpopular because many people completely live in denial of the fact that they are going to die. If we act like it won't happen, then we hope it won't actually happen. But it will. We joke about death and taxes being the only things we can't escape, but it's more than a humorous joke to help cope with the reality of our physical demise. Our time is short, and when we act like it's not going to happen, we use our time in ways that correspond to that denial. Some people work their lives away. Some people don't chase that meaningful dream they've always had. Some people spend time like it's unlimited, but it's not. I'm not trying to be a doomsayer. I'm trying to say that time is everything. 2020 has been flipping horrible, and I've learned so much about what I want for my life, and how I want to spend my time working on the important things, like my family and friendships and personal growth. I want to spend my time as well as I can. That doesn't mean I'm going to freak out over any wasted minute. But I'm going to be more aware of how precious time is, because we each only have so much of it. I want to love every minute I have, and I want that for others too. American restaurant waiters whine too much about their job. Listen, I'm a waiter. I've been one for 4 years, and have worked in 6 restaurants. You are not entitled to a tip, and if you don't get one, yeah it sucks, and can feel bad but letting it ruin your night is ultimately on you. Pressuring people and making them feel bad is one of the most disgustingly greedy things I've seen in my life. The counter argument everyone leads with is, well we survive off of tips, maybe our restaurants should pay us more then. No, you chose to work for the company, you agreed to the wages, you ungrateful dim-witted dullard. Second, you may not get paid minimum wage, but you make much more money than actual minimum wage jobs. I average 25 to 35 dollars an hour including my hourly pay and tips. I work in MN, and we get 9. 50 as a waiter here. I'm a very average server, but I do try my best. If you're making 2 an hour in another state, if you're okay at your job, you're still making 18 to 28 an hour, and if you're like literally everyone else, there are a lot of cash tips that accidentally don't get claimed. So the value of those dollars are actually a little higher as you won't be taxed on them. And the third point, and this one is probably the most important, is you are literally working a job someone can do immediately out of high school. It takes less than two week in most places to get trained in, if you have no experience serving. You could get fired, and then literally go down the road, and get hired, because of how high the job turnover rate is. 
I've gotten accepted at every place I've applied to except for the fine dining, but that was because I'm still new, and was even more so a year or two ago. It can be emotionally draining, and it can be hard on the feet after a long time on the floor, but each job has their cons. An office job can be emotionally and physically draining, in different ways. Ultimately, the choice to become a server and not learn a more advanced skill is your fault, so don't be a female dog and bite the hand that feeds you. Even 4 years later, I still feel super grateful I get tipped anything, as I make pretty good money for not needing an education. It almost feels like I'm cheating the system a bit lol. And sure, some customers are buttholes and don't tip. But they're buttholes and they are not even close to the majority, and unless you suck at your job, then you probably mostly get tipped. And I'm all for treating a customer with much less priority if they are an own non tipper But, they can still enjoy the experience, and can still recommend the restaurant to others, so you still try, and treat them good, so they bring in people who do tip. It's just sad seeing. How ungrateful people in the industry are, especially having their dishwasher and line cook friends on Facebook getting to see their winnie posts as they make significantly less, generally. It's an unpopular opinion for servers to have, but I feel like it's also been catching on to the public as well, but I don't think the public actually realizes how much money we actually make, and how relatively easy the job is. A lot of the public sees posts like, we work 14 hour shifts with no breaks and no food, customers yell at us, I often show up to work tired, and I'm still expected to be bubbly with the customers, etc. These sort of posts do have genuine validity, but most of the time they actually mean I didn't bring something I could eat quickly, even though I knew I'd be working a double shift, a customer yelled at me because their order got messed up, and I'm emotionally unable to shake off how traumatizing that was, how can you expect me to be professional and service oriented towards my guests, when I was up late watching a show or drinking. I don't like most youtubers. Ok don't get me wrong, I watch a lot of YouTube and I like it, but I think most YouTubers suck. Like most of them talk, like they are robots and sound really weird, I know the voice isn't everything but it can lower the quality of the content. A lot of them also have clickbait videos, and even if they don't they still take 5 minutes to get to the point. Like if I'm watching a tutorial video I wanna get to the point, not spend 5 minutes listening to their sponsor, Raid Shadow Elegantes. Then they extend the video to 10 minutes mostly talking about crap to get more ads. And then there's the family channels and influencers. The family channels just try to milk their kids for money, and the influencers are generally bad people that make their lives look perfect. And to top it off, most of them are buttholes in real life. Just so you know I don't dislike all youtubers, but most of them. And to end it, there are more reasons but these are a few of them. Like and subscribe for more videos.